Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's webinar, College Application Essays That Get You Admitted. Um, apparently, we changed the name. <laughs> my mistake. Uh, anyway, my name is Jason Rabinovitz. I hope you all will enjoy tonight's webinar. I know uh, we spent a lot of time putting it together. Um, there are a few handouts. If you go to the Go to Webinar Control Panel and click on the Handout tab, it'll open up and you'll see three handouts in there uh, that you can download. If you have any trouble accessing these, just send me an email. I can email them to you directly, jason at scoreatt.com. Um, if you have any audio difficulties during the course of the webinar, uh, if you click on the little plus sign on the go to webinar control panel, you'll have the ability to select phone and you can call in. It takes a couple seconds to get all set up, but it, it's pretty seamless and you'll be able to hear us just fine. I haven't had many people that have had to do that, but it has happened once or twice in the past. Our presenters tonight are Judy Rabinowitz, who is my mother, and Kathy Hart, one of our educational consultants. Kathy is having a little computer difficulty, so she's uh, getting that sorted out, but she'll be online with us shortly. Uh, Judy Rabinowitz, again, my mother, is a certified educational planner, has been guiding students through their, uh, through their college counseling for over 35 years. As an educational consultant, she authored numerous books, articles, and software on test prep and college planning. In her 23-year tenure at Educational Testing Service, Judy was a technical liaison to the College Board. She wrote the College Board's first SAT prep software and strategy chapters for their original SAT prep books. She then founded SCORE at the Top Learning Centers and Schools in South Florida, which is now accredited by Advanced Ed and Cognia. These five locations provide academic tutoring, SAT and ACT prep, courses for credit, and full-time private school in an intentionally small classes of one to six students. Judy, Judy has achieved perfect scores on the SAT and has devoted her professional life to helping students achieve academic success. And during in her college planning process, she works with hundreds of students annually. Kathy Hart, uh, a little bit about her since 2013. She's been an invaluable asset to our educational consulting team at Score at the Top. Uh, first serving as an expert teacher in our Palm Beach Gardens Learning Center and School, and a tutor specializing in high school English and test preparation for the ACT and SAT. In her vital role as an educational consultant, Kathy guides students through the various aspects of the college planning and application process, from consulting on high school course selection and extracurricular activities to preparing students for effective college visits and interviews. That inspirational guidance takes, uh, takes her students through more subjective elements of the application process too. Developing creative essay ideas, drafting essays, and improving student writing. The end product of the collaboration, applications, and essays that make her students stand out. She also regularly attends conferences and visits colleges to stay abreast of the most recent admissions trends. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to have them here with you tonight, uh, but before we get started on the presentations, I wanted to do a couple polls just to see a little bit about our audience. The first one is trying to find out who you are. So if you can take about 30 seconds uh, so we have an idea of who is uh, in our audience and we can tailor the presentations uh, to, to that audience as best we can. Doing pretty well. We've got about 10 seconds left and I'm going to close it. Awesome. All right, we got about 80% of the audience voted, so I'm going to close it now. 54% of the audience uh, are rising seniors, which is which is great. And the rest is parents and a bunch of educational consultants, a couple other high school students, and a couple high school counselors. Uh, just one more question before I turn it over, uh, and want to find out where you are in the college application process. Oops, and I just messed that one up. So I'm gonna have to do that one later. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so today's agenda, uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna turn this over to my mother um, and have her uh, go from there. So mom, I'm gonna make you the presenter. Thank you. Let me just show my screen. Oh, how do I? Okay, here we go. 
Is it okay? Can everyone see? Jason, can you see the screen for the uh, beginning of yeah. the uh, webinar? Thank you. Yeah, so right. let's get right into it. Thanks for coming, everyone. And you can see what our agenda is um, tonight. We will spend the majority of the time on the personal statement itself, which is the most important essay that you will be writing for your college applications. I think it's important to put the essay into perspective in terms of what else do colleges look at um, and what role does your essay play. And so these are the top 10 things that colleges consider when they review a student's application. And of course, if they don't require scores, and as you know, many colleges have been going test optional because of COVID-19, um, everything else is going to play an even greater role. So in fact, you can see that well-written essays right now are number five in the list, but without test scores, they are definitely going to be moving up um, to level, you know, to number four. So your essay is an incredibly important part of the application itself. Um, one of the most popular or let's say common applications that you'll be using um, will be the common application. Um, I just found out today that there's one more state university in Florida that will be using it next year. Um, so 10 of our state universities will use it. University of South Florida um, gets added to that list. Last year, there were 18 private colleges in Florida using the common app. There may be more yet this year. And virtually, I'd say every well-known college that you could name is probably on Common App. A couple notable exceptions are MIT and Georgetown, but they also have personal statements that you may find that you can modify what you're doing for College App, just tweak it a bit, and it will fit those colleges as well. Um, completely different essays for the entire University of California system, which I'm not going to be getting into this evening. There is another popular application called the Coalition application. It's sort of the newer kid on the block. It's accepted by a little bit more than 100 colleges, including all eight IVs. And by the way, in terms of Common App, as you'll see, all eight IVs are also on the Common App. Um, three of our state universities in Florida accept the Coalition app. Um, but realistically, there's almost no point using the Coalition app if virtually everything else that you're doing is on the Common app. So let's get right into writing application essays and talking about the personal statement. Common app does call it, by the way, your personal essay. So this is the essay question that is generally shared with every college to which you are applying on the Common app and is tweaked a bit for other colleges. But this is this is your voice, this is you. This is a story that reveals something special um, about yourself, something that you're passionate about. And years ago, I sat in on an information session um, at Princeton University where the then um, director, Fred Hargadon, made um, a comment that really just resonated with me um, when asked about the application essay. And his answer was that this is an opportunity for me, if I could, to sort of unzip the top of a student's head, open it up, look inside, and see what makes her tick. So this is your opportunity to totally set yourself apart from others, because there is just so much that a college can learn from you from numbers, in other words, from your grades and from your test scores. So this essay is really all about you, regardless of how it is asked. It is about you. So Common App has been using these same seven essay choices. You're only writing one of them. It has been using these seven essay choices for a number of years now. Um, they're exactly the same as they were last year and the year before. And it doesn't matter which of these choices you pick. No one choice is better than the other. But my personal favorite is number seven because it's basically giving you the opportunity to write about anything that you want as long as it is about you. Um, Common App personal statement is limited to between 250 and 650 words. And as you work on your successive drafts, I would say don't worry about the length. As you get closer to the end is when of your writing and to your final drafts is when you'll be more cognizant of you know, word length. 
And, and we believe that an essay that is between 500 and 600 words you know, is ideal. And that an essay of 250 or 300 words may be far too short to really express the depth of what you have to say. Coalition app gives you five choices, but notice the choice number five is really the same as the Common App's final choice, because this is just saying submit an essay on a topic of your choice. And there is a suggested but not firm limit of 500 to 550 words. So clearly, whatever personal statement you write for Common App, you can absolutely use it for Coalition App. You may have to adjust the word length a little bit. And what what do admission officers you know, say about your essay? Honestly, this is a tipping factor. It can get you in and it can keep you out. And again, it is just something very special about you that really does make a difference in the admission process. And just as an aside, I can tell you from personal experience that there have been times when families have um, engaged our services when their student was not admitted to well, for one example, University of Florida, um, because University of Florida does not admit all of the top students who apply. And one of the first things we do is review a student's application to see if we can pinpoint what went wrong. And I can't be, I, I, it's impossible to say, you know, how surprising it is for me that some very top students write essays that just don't fly. Um, because the, the feeling may be that, well, I'm a great student, I have great scores, great, great academics, I know I'm going to get in, and they write a one-shot deal type of an essay. And that's absolutely not the case. Um, you're going to see how much depth you need to go into in terms of, of, of your deep thinking, your brainstorming, your writing, your reviewing. So very important part of the application that can absolutely tip something in your favor or away from you. So the type of writing you're going to do for your application essay is not what you've been doing in school. This is not your standard, you know, analytic writing, um, thesis statement, conclusion. I mean, you will have a conclusion, um, but it is creative writing. Um, so very different than what you've been taught. Yes, you need to be grammatically correct. Um, up to a point, there are a few things where you can go off a little bit but it is definitely um, creative writing. So get rid of that ball and chain. You're you know, writing almost, almost as if you are speaking to someone. In fact, you'll see that a conversational tone in your essay is really the best. Um, however, part of the hardest part is often selecting a topic that best captures who you are. So you know, what is your first step? Um, well, knowing that this is going to tell a story about you, you really need to start reflecting on the things that make you stand out. But I will agree that it is very hard to know exactly where to begin. Um, there's nothing, I think, worse than looking at that, you know, cursor flashing at you on your computer screen and, and you're saying, you know, I don't know what to write about. So let's talk about you know where you start and the kind of brainstorming that's necessary and so of course you're going to start with something you know a lot about and that's you so let's look at selecting a topic because this really is critical and you need to take your time with it i don't want you to just come up with one idea and say okay that's what i'm going to go with it's a great idea to bounce ideas off your parents um no one has known you longer or better than your parents, and they should help you, but with brainstorming only. Um, do not ever give your parents a red pen. Don't let them write all over your essay and correct something, because the way someone in their, let's say, oh, 50s will write is not the same as someone who is 17 or 18 will write. So definitely bounce ideas off your parents, your teachers, um, your college counselors, you know, even some of your friends. So where to start? Where can you find the very best ideas? So we have a whole slew of things that, um, you know, a list that we will often go through with students when we're working one-on-one -on -one to help them focus on some interesting topics. And the first thing to do is, you know, go, go sit in your room 
in your bedroom and look at your walls. Um, look at the pictures, the posters, the um, bulletin board you have. Um, open up your junk drawer, see see what's in there. Um, is you know, it, look in your closet, what's you know on the shelves or on the floor, um, or favorite pair of shoes or you know an, an old shirt that you just can't part with. Um, and maybe it's your pet who comes, you know, in and out of your room, but you'll often find hints of something very meaningful just surrounding you in your own home. You might look at your resume, um, and that's a whole other topic, by the way. Um, colleges do like resumes more and more are asking for students to upload an activity resume. Um, which reflects the extracurricular commitments both in and out of school um, in which you've been involved since the summer before you started high school. And yes, colleges know right now that your extracurricular activities are vastly different than they would have been had there not been a pandemic. But as you look at your list of activities, perhaps one of them is something that really resonates with you as having changed something about you. So not everything that you did in it, but like one particular moment. Um, maybe there's some topic that you know, you know, a ton about and that you'd really like to write about that particular topic, but not just about that topic, um, your interaction, you know, with, <clears throat> with that particular topic. For example, one of our students a few years ago, Love, love, love Wikipedia, and he could spend hours and hours on Wikipedia learning from it. So rather than extolling the virtues of Wikipedia, he went through a specific, like, unusual stream of how he went from topic A to topic B to topic C and found interesting relationships and how that has really impacted him, you know, as a student, as someone who loves to learn. Um, perhaps you're going to be writing about something that just hasn't gone absolutely perfectly in your life. Colleges do like to hear about students who have overcome obstacles. Um, we'll get to COVID-19 a bit towards the end of this webinar because I will tell you um, a, bit, a bit about writing about the impact of COVID-19 on your life. Maybe there's something super cool about you that you'd like to write about. Maybe you are the world's best, you know, guitar player or singer and that you sing in the shower. Maybe you're not such a great singer, but you love to sing in the shower. So maybe there's just something super cool, you know, about you, your hair, your clothes, something that you would want to share with colleges. Um, how about the biggest failure that you've had? Um, something that you really worked on, tried hard to do. Maybe it was a failure in the lab as you were doing an experiment. But you know, sometimes we learn a lot more from failure than we do from success. You can write about some of your physical features, how tall you are, how big your feet are. Um, one of the fond one of my fondest memories of this is of a student who as we were brainstorming essay ideas, um, felt so comfortable with me that he put his feet up on my desk. And I remember remarking to him, oh my God, I've never seen such big feet. And he wrote the most amazing essay about where his big feet have taken him. Another one of my students shaking her hand, um, she said, oh, I'm so sorry, my palms are so sweaty. And I said, told her I didn't care. And it turns out she actually wrote about that. Um, got her admitted early decision to an Ivy League college. Anyway, writing about your physical features, something unusual about your physical features could be a great idea. Uh, perhaps one of your, your core values, um, perhaps you value honesty and integrity above everything else, and you have one or two very detailed specific examples to show why those are so important to you. Um, Another one of my students wrote about baking chocolate chip cookies. Part of his recipe was in his application, but more importantly was how he used chocolate chip cookies as a way to widen his circle of friends, to calm people down, um, to always be surrounded um, by you know, a circle of people who cared. Um, how about when you go to sleep tonight just before you're falling asleep? And tomorrow night and the next night, what are was it what is it that you're thinking about? Because maybe it's those last minute, you know, twilight time um thoughts that might be very deserving of your personal statement. 
or go and look out your window tomorrow morning when you get up or tonight before you go to bed um, or during the day tomorrow, look out your window and reflect on what you're seeing. Perhaps there's an essay there to reflect on the community in which you have grown up. What was the hardest decision you ever had to make? Um, whether it was an academic decision, a, a personal decision, but a decision that really perplexed you. Um, perhaps there was an ethical dilemma. Um, perhaps your best friend was cheating and you weren't sure how to handle that because your school has an honor code. Um, and it could be the reasoning that you went through and the decision that you finally came to. Um, in fact, if you were interviewing for med school admission, some of the interviews now put you into scenarios where you have an ethical dilemma. And it's almost like damned if you do and damned if you don't, you have to figure out a good solution and be able to justify it. Do you ever find yourself repeating like a certain word to yourself? I remember when I first learned the word Fliberty Gibbet, I was looking for all kinds of ways to use Fliberty Gibbet. And it really just kept on repeating to me. Um, it actually helped me teach vocabulary a lot better to students in the old days when SAT and ACT had a lot more vocabulary on their tests. By the way, a Fliberty gibbet is, is, is a scatterbrain. Um, and I'm sure we all know someone who we think of as a scatterbrain. Um, how about the best gift you ever got? Um, something big, something small, something recent, a long time ago, but something that has had a lasting impact on you. Perhaps your grandfather gave you a violin for your eighth birthday, and the violin has really become, you know, a central part of your life. Is there a favorite time of day that you have? Um, is it those first few minutes when you're waking up and before you're really getting out of bed and you're thinking about your day or something special you're going to do. Or maybe it's the moment, you know, the school bell rings and you're done with school for the day and it's time for you to embark on X. Why don't you look at your Google search history and see the last dozen or so things that you've searched. Um, perhaps you'll talk about one of them or several of them and how they were linked together not all that different from the student who wrote about Wikipedia. Do you have a song, a book, um, a movie, a TV series, something that you are addicted to and perhaps that you can relate to the words or a particular character or a theme? Um, that could make a very interesting essay as well. How about your most frightening experience? Were you ever diving underwater and risked perhaps running out of air um, or you were on a boat and suddenly the engine stopped working or maybe you had a flat tire while driving on I-95 and like how did you resolve it you know and by the way all of these topics you're telling you know an interesting story and Kathy will go into more detail about this but you're very much reflecting on the sort of so what okay how did that impact me how did that change me Something that happened to you when you were really young that you continually, you know, think about that was very meaningful to you. The world around you, things that have shaped you. Um, maybe it's it's you know your brother. Maybe it's your your next door neighbor. Maybe it's the fact that you have moved sixteen times. But how growing up, where you did, or and with who you did, has shaped who you are today. So you may wind up with a number of ideas, and these are ideas that you can then discuss with friends, parents, counselor, um, in order to try to you know, cut those ideas down to just a few. Um, and honestly, it doesn't really matter what it is you write about, whether it's something current, something from your past, something serious, something funny. Of course, always evoking the reader's emotion is, is a good idea. It's not what you write about, but how genuinely you write about it, how reflective you are, you know, in your thinking. So it is time to write, and I believe this is where, Kathy, are you on that you're going to take over? Yes, yes. So I'll have you do the slides for me, and can everyone hear me? I don't know if you can see me. 
Can you hear me? I well, can we hear, hear you, Kathy. Oh. Not anymore, though. <laughs> Kathy, are you there? <clears throat> okay, I can't hear Kathy. Um, I'm going to continue. If Kathy, you get on, just interrupt me, and I'll let you take over from here. Um, so let's go back and talk well, about now. Can, can you hear me, Judy? Yes, now I can hear you. So go ahead. Back. Sorry about that. Some some technical difficulties. Ready for me to uh, take over to go through the slides? Um, yes, I can keep displaying the slides as, as you present. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys for attending. Sorry about some technical difficulties on my end. So what I'm going to cover now is I'm going to go through how to write some steps actually to write your essay. And then I'm also going to, to give you some do's and don'ts to help you as you go through the writing process. And then we'll do a little quiz at the end to see make sure that you um that you that you've learned something today so it'll it'll be fun all right so first of all the, the key word on the screen here is the word time because when we are writing our college essays we want to give ourselves plenty of time to write um, the college application essay is not a one and done piece of writing. It needs to be written over multiple drafts. And when we do that, we wanna start at the beginning with that brainstorming process. So just like when you go to write um, an essay for an English class and you start out with that pre-writing and that planning, you wanna do the same with this for your college application essay. Um, and so what I always tell my students do, to do, and I was working with some of my juniors in one of my English classes this semester, was when you pick your story from those list of suggestions that Judy just went through, start writing down all the moments that you could recall from that story. Um, and the reason why you wanna do that is you wanna give yourself stuff to write with. So unlike writing an analytical essay from an English class, let's say, you're not, you don't have a book to go back up, but you do have your memory. So you wanna write down as much detail as you can recall. Then, because a college application essay is the point in which you're going to share some information about yourself. You're going to reflect on an experience, a challenge, your, your big feet, your red hair. Um, you want to um, reflect, you want to also, in addition to brainstorming for your story, you also want to reflect upon your story's meaning and always asking yourself those questions like, why does it matter? What did you learn? Like, what does this say about you? Then what you're gonna do is you're going to silence your inner editor and write your rough draft. Now, rough drafts are gonna be exactly that. It's going to be rough. It's going to be stilted. You're gonna be like, I've never written an essay before in my life. Um, but you just wanna get those ideas down onto paper. Again, you're, you're just worried about telling the story and reflecting on it. Then next step, the magic happens. And the magic happens when you revise. And revisions, again, are gonna take place over a period of time. So usually what we advise students is when you have a rough draft done, set it aside for a couple of days, then come back to it because you'll come back to it with fresh eyes. You'll have kind of a little bit more um, like objective way to view your writing. Then you do a second revision, a third revision. Um, for students that often ask, well, how many revisions does it take? For the students that I've worked with over the years, if, if I've got students that are really adept at writing and, and are pretty strong, they can usually get a college application essay done, maybe like three to four drafts. This is for the personal statement. But others need you know, more than that, sometimes like seven or eight drafts. So always giving yourself time to do those revisions because that's where the magic lies. Then you also want to consider the proofreading. And we're going to look at some of these in a little bit more detail when I come to the do's and don'ts. But proofreading is especially important because this is something you're going to be sending as part of your application portfolio. And as Judy noted, it's an important part. And so you want to make sure that what you share with your readers is as polished as it can be. What I also find helpful, another tip, and I do this with my students starting from rough draft and working through final draft, is reading the essay out loud to catch errors that your eye missed. So I'll work with a student, we'll read the rough draft, that's when we can hear it's really rough. Then we do a revision, we read it out loud again, 
And each time we read it out loud, that's where you can notice the gaps. Like if you're missing a transition or if you need to make a better connection or, oh, that's a run on sentence. I didn't catch that with my eye the first time around. Um, and so that's always important. That's another good step in the proofreading and part of your revision process, really reading it um, out loud throughout. And then always, 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 starting the process early going back to that word time i'm probably going to repeat this over and over again a good essay needs some time it needs time for you to spend time coming up with an idea brainstorming it drafting it and then finally getting it ready to be part of your application all right, so let's move on to the do's and don'ts. And I love this cartoon, you know, make sure you spell college right. Don't put collage on your application. I have seen that, spell check won't catch that. All right, let's look at our first of our essay do's. And I'll just, um, I'll just get started by saying that many of these do's and don'ts are gonna be useful for you as you get go through the writing process. So some things are gonna be more applicable to a later draft and others are gonna be helpful as you're writing an early draft. So this first tip to do keep it personal is great for the your entire, um, your entire, your, the entire process of writing your application essay. So always you wanna focus the story on you. And again, just thinking of those great brainstorming ideas that Judy just shared with us just a few moments ago. All of them are designed to come up with ideas about you and always remembering it's a story about you. It's a story about what you learned. Um, and it's gonna be your story. It's not one that another student can tell. Um, I've seen some lovely essays when I'm working with a student, at least initially, I've seen some great essays about a favorite sibling or a favorite teacher or a favorite relative. And those don't work because they're not about the student. They don't highlight the applicant, the student, and, and tell a story of, from your life that's wonderful and, and just really highlights who you are. So that's the first step throughout. Every time you're, any, no matter where you are in the, your essay writing, make sure that you keep it personal. All right, our next tip is using a conversational tone. Um, and this is where I find that students sometimes have a little bit difficulty finding that engaging natural voice because we don't do this type of writing in our English classes. It's not analytical, it's not argumentative, it's, it's a form of narrative writing. You're telling a story. So sometimes when students get stuck and are not sure what that means, I always advise them, well, well, picture that you're, you're sitting across, you're in a comfy seat and you're sitting across from your best friend and you're telling him or her a story about your life, about this experience, about this moment. And think about how you would, how you would share it. Um, one thing about using a conversational tone that, that's different from when you write a formal academic essay is contractions are fine. And indeed, that really is sometimes a little kind of like magic touch that makes that essay sound really, really just engaging, really, really interesting. Um, you can also play around with, with shorter sentences, with those center sentence fragment, fra excuse me, fragments for a natural storytelling voice. So it's okay to use that more informal language, but do be mindful. And I'm gonna talk about this a little later when I, when I talk about some of the don'ts, is this is a personal statement. So it is a professional piece of writing. All right, another good tip is keeping your focus narrow. So that's why we look at those questions and we narrow down to one experience or concept or anecdote. So when you're doing your brainstorming, you're isolating your experience to one moment and really writing it all to, into all the details that made that moment. And the reason why we wanna do this is if your essay is too expansive, it's gonna end up sounding watered down. You want to convey one message, whether it's that you're responsible, you're determined, um, you've shown resilience, you've faced ad adversity. And if your essay goes all over the place and loses that focus, that narrow focus, it's going to just, it, it's not going to get the, mess the message across. It's going to go a little off topic. So you always want to think about every word, every sentence should count towards your prompt to that central message. 
Now we're gonna look over at like how when details come to life. So this is another one of the, the great little tips. In order to make your essay really personalize and focus, this is where the details matter. And so we're gonna look at a few examples and these are from essays, actual essays, and we're looking at our befores and afters. So let's look at a boring sentence. I like to be surrounded by people with a variety of backgrounds and interests. Doesn't really say anything. It's not vivid and not specific. But here's a great example. That night, I sang the theme song from Casablanca with a baseball coach who thinks he's bogey, discussed Marxism with a little old lady, and heard more than I ever wanted to know about some woman's gallbladder operation. Same idea, same message, but notice how you can tell a lot more about the student from these details that he or she chose to enrich their essay. All right, let's look at another example. Let's look at the boring one. I want to help people. I've gotten so much out of life through the love and guidance of my family. I feel that many individuals have not been as fortunate. Therefore, I would like to expand the lives as others. Anyone could have written that. That doesn't really tell me anything. Let's look at the details. My mom and dad stood on plenty of sidelines till their shoes filled with water or their fingers turned white or somebody's golden retriever signed his name in mud on their coats, their kind of commitment is what I like to bring to working with fourth graders. So really, really nice details makes the essay more memorable and indeed more personal. And that brings us to show, don't tell. Going back to what Judy noted earlier, is that this is a piece of creative writing. And just like an, the author of your favorite short story, your favorite novel uses those details to show you, it makes for better essay writing. So let's look. Um, it took a while for me to get used to all the fancy lab equipment. That is our telling. That is not so great. And then I've got scales, test tubes, beakers, and Bunsen burners. I felt at first like my slightest breath would set off some chain reaction. And so this is our showing. And notice what our showing does. Our showing makes that essay more engaging. Our telling just informs us. We want to engage our reader. We want to make this as personal as possible. So we always want to show. Let's look at another tip here, and this can be helpful no matter where you are in the essay writing process, is keeping that essay focused. You want to answer the question, look at your prompt, look at your story, look at the message that you want to send to your reader, share with your reader, and always making sure that every sentence goes back to that prompt. You don't have much space to, to digress. Um, English teacher time, it's always good, just like you would do in an academic essay, to vary sentence structure and to use transitions. And you can use a variety of sentence types and lengths, including exclamations and questions. Um, here is a list of conversational transitions that you can use as you move around in your essay, as you connect ideas, and these lend themselves again to that conversational tone. Also, just like you would in an in, in English essay, English class essay, you wanna use your active voice. Passive voice can sound flat, and active voice gets your message across in a clear and concise manner. So the tray of food was dropped by the waiter. You can probably all predict the active voice of this. The waiter dropped the tray of food. Now let's look at, before we move on to the don'ts, our openings and our closings. And I will just say that for, for most of the students that I work with, these are the two hardest areas to write because we really want to engage our reader. We want to hook him or her. Um, we also want to leave them with something memorable. So when you're looking at your introduction, you want to give some time to that. Usually a good hook comes about maybe in like a second or third draft. It won't appear in the rough draft unless you're really good. You want to create that idea of mystery and intrigue. You want to keep your reader reading and you don't want to give away your whole story at the beginning. So let's look at a couple of example hooks. Brendy's Ice Cream Castle Italian Pizza, Doris's Supermarket haagen -Dazs. Was it age discrimination? No one would talk to me in just a single interview, but without a callback, 
only 15, no car, but I desperately wanted to work. I want to read more. I want to find out about this applicant. Did, did he or she get a job? Every photographer remembers her first camera, just as a musician remembers her very first instrument or a golfer, her first set of clubs. Mine, a baby blue Sony point and shoot that could fit in one of my hands. Different style of writing, but again, it creates a sense of, I wanna know more. I wanna know more about this activity that clearly matters a lot to this reader. Sometimes we might have a longer opening, Sometimes a shorter opening can also create that tension. So you've got some variety. My favorite science project was a complete failure. I wanna read more, I wanna find out what happens. Name two neurotransmitters affected by amphetamines. Mm, interesting, probably the student wants to study science perhaps. I wanna know more, I wanna know what's gonna happen next. No more seltzer water for me. I'm wondering why to that. I want to know more. And then the moment I cross the white chalk line, I feel a tremendous hunger to compete. So I know this might be about athletics, but I'm still wondering what's going on. I want to know what happens next. So sometimes we can do short and sweet, and sometimes we can go a little longer. All right, conclusions. Also can be difficult, but can be done. Again, a little bit later on in the writing process. Revise, revise, revise. So your conclusion offers your last chance to persuade your reader, and you want to make it memorable, so leave a lasting impression. So I contend that it's with imagination, thinking about infinity and solving Rubik's cubes, that I further my passion and obsession with problems. Sherry can crack Bruno's code in a few seconds, but his glowing multicolored multi influence will remain with me for a lifetime. Here, you try. I love those single sentence word, here, and then you try. Very simple, very engaging. It's just a nice way to wrap up this essay. And one thing you don't want to do, like you, how you learn an English class where you restate your thesis statement, remind your reader of your points, avoid summarizing. Conclude effectively, just like you have that hook in the opening paragraph, make it memorable in the last paragraph. All right, so let's move on to some essay don'ts. So again, we'll look at some big picture ideas and we'll also look at some of those little details to help you as you work through your essay. So first of all, one of the questions that, that we'll get a lot, I get a lot, is from students and parents saying, well, well what, do, what do college admissions officers want to hear? And they, they don't, they, they're, not, they're not looking for something specific other than they want to know a story about, about you. Um, but don't tell them what they already know, right? So they already know how wonderful their university is. Um, you want to bring something new to the table, whether you're writing a why this college essay or you're writing your personal statement. Bring something, bring something new and always come back to you. You don't want to be cynical or condescending. You're trying to show yourself in a positive light. Um, so make sure your essay has maintains that conversational positive tone throughout and avoid being offensive and generalizing those won't lend to good personal essays also avoid rewriting your resume if it's already in your application and you're not focusing on it as one of the extracurricular activity essays let's say for instance you don't need to rehash your resume it's all right there there's a place for that already on your app application. So for example, you don't want something that looks like this paragraph. So during my junior year, I played for singles on the tennis team, served on the student council, maintained a B plus average, traveled to France and worked at a cheese factory. Whew, that's probably already in the application. Pick one of those. Maybe I want to know about cheese factory, to be honest. Um, don't tell the story of your life. So going back to that narrow focus, the best essays, the memorable and unusual ones, are going to be focused on that single slice of life experience. Um, and if you are going to write about the family, the trip, um, the extracurricular activity, narrow it down to one moment. So a single religious service, for example, an interesting and unusual meal, 
what it's like working on a day on the life of, of, a, of a job. I had a student I worked with many, many years ago now, and his essay was all about what it was like to work one shift in, in where he worked in his, his place of employment. And it was a really lovely, deep essay that really showed a lot of insight into what mattered to him as, as a person. So keeping that focus narrow is better than trying to tell everything at once. Here's a great message here. Don't be verbose. You only have 650 words, usually trying to keep it around 550 to 600. Your message can come ac across clearly and concisely. So looking at eliminating those extra words. So for instance, don't say in society today, change it to now. And then if we look at a too many words example, the over the years it has been pointed out to me by my parents, friends, teachers, and I've even noticed this about myself as well, that I'm not the neatest person in the world. How could we say this a lot more clearly? Is we could say it, I'm a slob. Um, this is also a good instance when I'm helping students with their essay edits they get further on, is taking out words like I tried to, I wanted to, I was able to. A lot of those filler words are unnecessary. Simply use your subject verb and, and you'll, you'll share your message. And then, of course, little tip, never write we as humans, are we something else? I don't know if you would have even a place in your essay to, to include that. <laughs> of course, it's important, know your audience. Your college admissions officers who are going to be reading hundreds of essays, many times they're going to be skimming. Um, so you want to be interesting. Make those 500 words matter. Use those rich details. Um, however, you know, don't try to be so memorable that your essay comes off a little eccentric or uh, philosophical. That won't leave a good impression. But just keep in mind of your audience. Make it interesting. Also, too, you want to take into consideration, we talked about this a little earlier about when using a conversational tone. Always remember that your essay is a professional document. You want to get into these colleges. So this essay is part of that professional portfolio. If you are writing about a potentially sensitive subject, let's say divorce or death or something along those lines, write with maturity and clarity come from a place where you're looking back and reflecting on what was it like going through that experience and what you learned or gained from it um and certainly i would never say you know don't write a topic of that of, of that sort i have seen some great essays that have written about very personal experience, very personal challenges. Um, but certainly when in doubt, don't hesitate to ask for feedback. Again, you know, a parent, a friend, an English teacher, a counselor, someone who can help you look at the essay very clearly and honestly. All right, cliches, they are very common. They're going to be in abundance in your first draft, in your earlier drafts. And so you want to get rid of these words just because they pop up again and again. So especially this, this final point, blank is my passion. I always challenge my students, okay, you've written that. Now let's see if you can show that blank is your passion. Sailing, soccer, you know, making chocolate chip cookies. Let's see if we can show that rather than tell that. Let's look at a few more here. Again, these are very, very common. The idea I'd no longer take something for granted, lessons are useful, the greatest lesson of all, I know what it is to triumph over adversity, the, the idea of opening up your eyes to a whole new world, and they're poor, yet they're so happy. So again, these might pop up early on in your essay, but do think of a way how to fix them as you're revising. And of course, your readers will appreciate the subtlety there. Now, if you get stuck on a cliche, try going back to that tip that we talked about in the do's, was take that cliche and use those personal details to make it your own. So we can see as I finished the race, I realized I learned the value of hard work and appreciated the fact that I could accomplish anything if I set my mind to it. So we've got two 
cliches here. Now I'm going to rewrite this using these details specific. The finish line was a buzz of body types, short, tall, skinny, and fat, all sharing a sentiment that glued us together. We had done it. We had conquered our own doubts. Mine were left behind somewhere in the dust. So I showed the idea of the value of hard work and setting my mind to it. I didn't tell it. So it goes back to that show, don't tell. Few other examples, broadening my horizons in New York. Let's add some details. Street corner falafel, Hebrew national hot dogs, ramen noodles, endless choices that sprawled across the lower Manhattan. For a moment, I became a New Yorker with a bit of everywhere in my blood. Few more things about avoiding those empty generic statements. This is going to another type of essay that Judy's going to talk about uh, momentarily, the Why This College essay. And notice this one, I chose College X because College X is committed to learning and I want to learn. Learning is important. Um, you know, talking about how beautiful a college is. It's a perfect match for me because of its renowned professors and intellectually curious students. So you could put any college name in there. It won't distinguish that you really want to convey your, your interest in that specific college. Also, don't use a thesaurus. I mean, if, if larger words come natural to you and you want to throw a few in there, that's, that's fantastic. That will maintain your voice and the sense of who you are. But don't struggle to try to rewrite and, and come up with a, a synonym for every single word, for every single adjective. And going back to that whole, you know, concise and precise idea for your essays, using best words, not the biggest words. Simple is often better. So when we think about that conversational tone, we also want to think about some things to avoid. So we talked about avoiding getting too, too personal. Um, always think about you are still writing an essay, not an email, it's not a text message. Um, avoiding any LOLs, LMAOs, and also avoid unnecessary words that just come across as a little, a little, I don't know, a little immature. So very, a lot, cool, awesome, nice, so removing those, especially in the proofreading process, if you haven't done an edit for that, those can be easy words to take out. Um, but do remember, contractions are fine. They're actually preferred because they make your essay sound like a conversation, like a natural storytelling piece and not a formal academic essay. And of course, please don't ever, ever, ever plagiarize an essay or buy one online or ask your parents to write one or let your parents write one. Admissions officers know, they, they can tell when the writing isn't your own, when someone, someone much older than you or not you is writing an essay. It should sound like a high school student wrote it. Um, don't recycle essays, meaning don't reuse one essay for a school, for another school, unless it fits the prompt. And just briefly, what we mean by that is your personal statement is going to be that one essay that goes to all colleges that request it, which most colleges will. You might end up writing some supplemental essays, which we're going to talk about shortly. If the essay is virtually the same prompt, like tell me more about an extracurricular activity, you probably can reuse that essay, but always review the prompt just to make sure you didn't miss some little tiny switch or change that that college might have reworded the essay. Of course, we talked about proofreading, reading out loud, looking for your typos and your spelling. You don't want to submit an essay that clearly hasn't been edited and looked for those finer details. Don't forget spell check will not catch form. High school, I hope to work, wrong too, for Google with my best pride. Make sure you know if you're writing an essay for Yale that you're not including something about your crimson Harvard sweatshirt. So always go through. It helps to have an extra set of eyes as well too. Have a parent, a good friend who's a writer, an English teacher, your counselor, go through and do that final check with you just to make sure you don't miss, don't miss anything. And this is a great, great tip. At the end of the day, it's an essay that is about you. Um, and you want to think about, you know, would your personal statement pass this test? If you dropped it in the middle of the hallway and your teacher picked it up and your name wasn't on it, would she know it was your essay if your name wasn't 
on the page. Would she be able to tell that it was an essay that, that I wrote, that Kathy wrote, versus one that Judy wrote, versus one that Jason wrote, versus one that you wrote? So it's got to be about you and using those details, focus, keeping that focus narrow. There's going to be some, um, some, some really neat stuff that you can come out with that's going to be all about you. All right, so we've got a little quiz. And let's take a look here. So we've got, I entered on to the scene of this terrestrial sphere on a vernal evening in 1994. So let's think about this. Is it too wordy, too much of a thesaurus, doesn't paint a descriptive enough picture, or nothing is wrong? So let's leave that open for a few minutes. And you can select one or more of the following. Let it go for a little bit. And let's see, all right. Good, all right. So yeah, it looks like everyone, let's see, we got two wordy for sure, 34%. Um, definitely be too much of a thesaurus for sure. And and doesn't paint a descriptive enough picture. Yeah, indeed, um, I would even say, you know, it doesn't really say much, does it? It uses some big words, but we're just saying, you know, I was born. <laughs> all right, let's look at, the next one, what is wrong with this? As a high school sophomore, I was our church's representative to the youth fellowship. I organized youth group events, the largest being the Bishop's Ball, a statewide event for 30, 300 young people. I also played JV soccer for two years. As a senior, I will be playing varsity soccer, but in the off season. As a junior, I coach soccer for my town. All right, so let's look at this one. We got it, rambles, covers too many different things. The comma after ball should be outside the quotes or nothing is wrong. So go ahead and you can select one or more of the following. You guys are good so far. Wait a minute. All right, let's see. Okay, yes, A, rambles, definitely. This just goes all over the place. There's no connection. And yeah, covers too many different things. We talked about earlier, you, you already have a resume and an activities page. You don't need to highlight your entire high school career. Um, no, see, the ball, sh the comma should be inside next to the ball and good, nobody got nothing is wrong. So good, yeah, this one is, this is, you know, the lack of focus essay. All right, let's look at our next one. My friends and I love to spend weekend evenings together. We get along really well because we share so many classes together and all of us are in the same two clubs. A should be one sentence. B reveals a little about the writer, lacks focus. C should be my friends and me. D, nothing is wrong. So I'll give you guys another minute. All right, let's see. So should be one sentence. Yeah, if, if it's we probably would want to leave it at two. That would be a long sentence. But yeah, absolutely. Choice B reveals Little about the writer lacks focus. Um, this is a this is an essay that's focusing on the friends. We've got a lot of we, my friends. We want to focus on your experience. So trying to avoid writing too much about you and your friends is, is a good choice. All right, let's move on to the next one. So I had no experience discussing human rights or mandatory minimum sentences. What I did have was determination. So A, the writer reveals nothing about herself. B, the second sentence is too short. C, vocabulary is too simplistic. D, nothing is wrong. So what's wrong here? 
All right, let's see how everyone did here. All right, so for this one, this one is an interesting one. Um, the second sentence is fine. The vocabulary is appropriate. I would also, I would also say that, I mean, even, even that the writer doesn't reveal anything about him or herself might be a possibility as well too, because we're not quite sure what's what's going on here. The, the language is still relatively broad. We got this determination, which is kind of a generic word. So this might be better with a little bit of, 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 of focus and tweaking here, you know, to make it more specific to the, the writer. All right, let's look at this one here. I know it is all in good nature and we all laugh, but it is interesting to see how the tables have turned. So do we want to use the contraction it's? Does it need a comma? Tables have turned is too colloquial or nothing is wrong. See how you guys did. This one is going to be our be our last our last uh, last part of our quiz. Let's see how everyone did. All right, good. Yeah. So kind of kind of split here. We got to uh, use the contraction it. So absolutely. So those of you that got that correct, give yourself a hand. That definitely makes it sound more like you're talking. Imagine you're sitting across from your best friend and you're using it's just like you would in in conversation. Um, you could use a comma certainly for clarity and to break up the, the two independent clauses there. Definitely the C tables have turned is too colloquial. It's, it's, it's a cliche and likely the writer would find a better description, a better way to say tables have turned and try to avoid that cliche. All right, so I am just about done with my portion and now I'm going to turn it back over to Judy for essays that work. Thank you guys for your attention and sorry I can't, you can't see me but you guys did wonderful and good job on the on the quiz. I'm giving you guys a little round of applause. Thank you. Okay, I am back. And let's share my webcam. And Jason, can you fix it so that I'm small in here? And let's do it that way. Okay, because I'd like to show some visuals. What I'm going to do is um, read to you essays over the past, goodness, 5, 10, 15 or more years. And it also shows you nothing has really changed in terms of these essays. But these are essays that really worked well. Each one of these students was admitted to his or her top choice university. Um, so the very first one is about growing up and playing the guitar. When I was in seventh grade, my best friend's older brother gave me quite possibly the best advice I've ever received. Always keep a guitar pick and some change in your pocket so that when a girl asks you for a quarter, She'll see you play the guitar and instantly fall in love with you. That was it. In one moment, the singular purpose of my life, young life became clear. I was going to become a rock star. So I set out to teach myself guitar and keyboards. I encountered the first of many obstacles, my mother, the budding rock critic, the enemy. On a nightly basis, she Quetched, and that's by the way a um, German or Yiddish word that means complain and really, really, really complain. And the student did put it in italic, so since it's not in English, on a nightly basis, she quetched about the god awful noise bleeding through my bedroom walls. This is beauty, mom. This is the avant garde, the future. I never faulted my mother's lack of sophistication. Retribution, I was sure, would come when she saw her son's face plastered on the television screen, crooning to hive-like swarms of pleading women. My drive remained unshaken, my dream undeterred. 
Although I ignored my mother's failure to appreciate my art for as long as possible, the larger meaning of her response soon became unavoidable. Towards the end of eighth grade, as puberty brought me to its strangest stages, the principal of my middle school notified me that I was to be called up at the end of the year award ceremony. I instantly imagined rocking the roof off the school gym. My friends would scream. Parents and teachers would gush in awe. Glory and fame would finally be mine. Maybe I would even take my shirt off. Seven days later, I felt nothing but mortified as I walked up the stairs to the stage to receive an award for earning a perfect score on the national Latin exam. And he writes in quotes in Latin, fac me colerio, vomere, and he translates, gag me with a spoon. By 10th grade, I was confident enough in my musicianship to form my own band. During classes, Michael, my chronically tardy but well-intended bassist friend with a sweet Fender amp, and I passed countless notes of potential band names, each one more charming and clever than the next. To the Republic, too pedantic. The Robots, too soulless. The Transcontinental Love Express, too bubblegummy. The Stop Coden, perfect. The three bases in DNA that signaled the end of a polypeptide chain provided just the right mix of strangeness and erudition. We were going to be the coolest 15-year-olds ever. Our debut, however, was met with less than encouraging reviews. As we rendered our hearts visible to the world, emoting with a sex sense of re restless abandon, most of our friends, after reassuring their love for us as people, left the room. The few who remained threatened physical harm. As my 18th birthday approached, I was compelled to acknowledge that the prospects of my dream of becoming a rock star were fading rapidly. Other things were changing too. My taste in music were becoming more eclectic and obscure. My long-standing interest in politics was strengthening. I was discovering that I didn't need to be a rock star to interest girls. My academic talents, previously a source of considerable self-consciousness, no longer embarrassed me. The path I was choosing was taking me to college, not to a record deal in LA. Within the contours of this realization, I recognized the conclusion of my childhood. Up on the horizon, I caught the first glimpse of my adult life. Still, even now, when the mood is right and no one is home, I sling my ax over my shoulder and cramp, crack, sorry, crank the amplifier up to 11. With the lights low, I strike the sexiest of poses and gaze a dead stare into the mirror. I let the first chord ring. Despite everything, I am Brian St. Clair, rock star. Name was changed to protect the innocent. Okay, the next one. This is about a cat and mortality a much more serious essay. And I hope you got some good laughs out of the last one. Have you ever seen a cat pounce on a bird? Have you ever witnessed the rippling of feline muscles, the quick desperate jerking of feathers, and the deadly looming silence that follows? If you have, you would most certainly understand how this fundamental act of nature is perhaps life's most humbling phenomenon. For a child, mortality is a concept that is difficult to grasp. In fact, Mortality is difficult to grapple with at any age. Exploring my grandmother's garden with the innocent eyes of an eight-year-old, I witnessed my grandmother's kitten attacking a hummingbird, and the idea of mortality slowly came into focus. My grandmother's house in the ancient town of Ashkelon on the coast of Israel is surrounded by a garden crowned with fruit trees, a fence wrapped with untrimmed honeysuckle hedges, and the stone paved pathways bordered by sunflowers. The overall effect of the place is enchanting, and the butterflies and birds that so frequently kiss my grandmother's flowers recall images of the Garden of Eden or Burnett's The Secret Garden. One dew-filled morning, I noticed that my grandmother's kitten was intently gazing at something only inches away. The kitten was studying a little red and green hummingbird with its long beak and a honeysuckle flower, entirely unaware of the cat's close scrutiny. The hummingbird, 
no more than two inches long, almost seemed like a colorful extension of the honeysuckle with its rapidly moving wings resembling a ring of petals around its body. Mesmerized by the little bird, I was remembering some trivia that my second grade teacher had told me about hummingbirds' heart beating incredibly fast. Suddenly, the kitten raised its belly from the floor and tensed the muscles in his back and legs. Before I could react, the kitten pounced on the hummingbird, and all I could see amidst the rustling of feathers and fluid movements of the cat was the desperate spark of fear in the bird's small eye, quickly extinguished as the feline's jaws engulfed its body. Snapping back to reality, I attempted to pry open the kitten's jaw, but he held his jaws tightly together, refusing to forfeit his hard-owned prey. I screamed at the cat and pulled at its jaw, but the orifice remained closed. And after a few hysterical moments, I gave up trying to save the little bird. I ran to my grandmother, sobbing, sobbing wildly and telling her what her despicable cat had done. But she just patted my head as I cried into her apron, explaining that this is the way that life works and that I eat chicken all the time. Frustrated with her lack of compassion, I went to the bedroom and continued to cry. It seemed so unjust that something so beautiful and vibrant in one moment was little more than cat chow the next. However, as I was stifling my last bitter snivel, I began to consider what my grandmother had said. Perhaps the hummingbird did not live very long, but then again, adults are always saying that life is too short. In that instant, I took hold of what I had never before understood, mortality, the transience of life. Reflecting on this encounter, which seemed horrifying at the time, awakened me to a purpose of life, to take advantage of the time that is given me and utilize it to the best of my abilities. I began to more avidly pursue my long-term goals with the understanding that I may never see them achieved, but that simply striving to achieve them could be as rewarding as actually accomplishing them. That hummingbird helped me to resolve, even as a young girl, that no matter what happens tomorrow, my dreams and goals give purpose to my life today. Let me just say that, number one, I love, love, love the picturesque descriptions. You could really see exactly what she was talking about. And number two, um, the large words that she used, which you may think came from a thesaurus, were truly her own. This was um, a 17-year-old um, high school senior with an amazing, amazing vocabulary, which showed up um, in terms of her SAT score and her grades in AP English. Okay, here's one about science. Um, this is, was a great essay for a student who was applying pre-med. This is a student who did wind up at an Ivy League as well as an Ivy League med school. I will tell you that um, it required more revisions than I've ever seen in my entire life. He was a fabulous student who at the time was not the best writer but through many, many, many revisions, he came up with this. A twinge of relief passed through my body as I loaded my first well. Maybe gel electrophoresis isn't that bad, I thought. Then I noticed the dye spreading throughout the buffer. The source? A hole my pipette had poked through the well. I had ruined my first gel. In spite of such failures, I've always had a passion for discovery, whether looking under a rock or over a bacterial culture. Throughout high school, I've found an avenue for my exploratory nature in the laboratory. Research has been a medium of education, teaching me more than I've ever learned in the classroom. My research career resembles a soap opera, wisps of opportunity intermeshed with frequent heartbreaks. Nevertheless, its impact on me as an individual is unquestionable. Stepping into the research world in ninth grade, I knew exactly what I wanted. My friends before me had always seemed to have projects dealing with cancer, AIDS, or some other breakthrough scientific topic. To have such a project, which always seemed to earn my friends countless awards and scholarships, was my sole objective. However, when I tried contacting medical labs in my area, nobody seemed to want a petty freshman. After a month of fruitless searching, my, conscious, my conscience compelled me to seek research elsewhere, and I contacted a plant physiology lab. I remember thinking that this, quote, plant project, end quote, was a last resort. However, I ended up learning invaluable techniques while adapting to the laboratory. I realized that plant biology was just as complex as cancer. I habituated myself to my project by extensive journal reading and note taking. 
By the time of science fair, I was extremely comfortable with my experiment. I ended up earning Army and corporate awards and a trip to the state science fair. In 10th grade, I actively pursued a botany project with a dramatically changed mindset from a year ago. I learned from the experience that the only asset that really matters in research is my determination to conduct an excel in my investigation. The repudiation of my romanticized views of research taught me more valuable lessons. I've discovered that the lab is not a place for perfectionism. Every day in the lab, I face multiple setbacks. Whether it's something as inconsequential as a broken pipette or as devastating as a contaminated protein, failures are inevitable in research. During my 11th grade summer, I attempted to express particular kinase from its DNA. I had, I had proceeded to the penultimate step of my protocol when I discovered that the gene would not ligate due to a particular vector. I hope I'm not really messing up the pronunciation of these uh, lab terms, thus voiding all my work up to that point. However, I could do nothing but troubleshoot, but troubleshoot the error and move on. Such experiences have taught me that the ability to acknowledge and disregard failure is integral to research. And yet, the lab is no place for heroics. Being, being proactive also includes disregarding masculine conceptions and contacting the professor if something goes wrong. Indeed, on the lab bench, my failures have taught me much more than my successes. Now, as I research multiple sclerosis and its pathogenesis at the Harvard Medical Institute, I realize that I have fulfilled my ninth grade ideal. Yet I've come to the true understanding that this is just as valuable as, quote, plant projects, end quote. Every aspect of research has the possibility to affect millions of people. And I am grateful to have taken part in this service for the past four years. In my future medical career, I plan to utilize the valuable lessons I learned as a student researcher. But until that time comes, I'm sure I'll poke a few more holes in things. By the way, I love the way his end came back to the beginning, because if you recall, in the beginning, he talked about poking a hole um, basically through his first well and ruining it. Okay, now to something a bit more lightheaded, hearted, sorry, lighthearted. Bright, red, like Superman's cape and as loud as the wail of a siren, that's my hair. Even on a normal day at the supermarket, my mane is a coiled lightning rod for everything from compliments to unsolicited advice, to never dye it or cut it, all from complete strangers. Others go as far as to say, if they had scissors, that they would cut it and make a wig for themselves. So what's a girl to do besides cl steer clear of the shears? I grew up with this attention around me, and I believe the comments shaped my direction. Naturally introverted, I've become more at ease over time due to the number of people I communicate with, all thanks to the world's curliest conversation starter. Building a sense of self aside from my helmet of hair was no simple feat. When I was younger, I felt overshadowed by my hair. It was something I hadn't chosen, yet it seemed to define me. And its impression was powerful. I now realize I spent years feeling like an outcast because I did not understand the value of what I would eventually come to call my powers. As I grew, I found myself passionate about empowering the less fortunate in my community. The world needs a hero, but again, what's a girl to do? I already didn't know what to do with the tiny bit of attention I received from my messy bun, but the desire to give back to my community was incentive finally to let my hair down. I decided to have my hair function as a metaphorical big red cape. It's the uniform any superhero needs to fight for the greater good. Here is how I use my quote powers. I'd been integral in various local service endeavors, but my hair taught me to think big and bright. I went global. Most notably, I raised money for Balinese children's education. I contact Kadek, the child I sponsor by writing letters, and he replies with letters of his own about working in order to buy his family food and a shelter during the rainy seasons. Kadik is a lesson in gratitude, for he is so grateful for his family and the opportunities education brings him. Prior to that first year working together, I had committed to raising money for my child's education. But after just a few written exchanges, I felt personally invested in assisting Kadik, a young boy I'd never met and who lived halfway around the world. My inner hero 
equally aflame as my bright red cape had revealed herself. Kate had sent me artwork he created in school. One drawing I received from him was of a lion, proud, mane, and tact. I too now pride myself on my red locks, for it brought me to Kadik. For my senior year, I am sponsoring a new child. Kadik graduated. I know now that this red beacon of my hair was a placebo. I have the confidence to make connections with Kadik and write back to him with my own experiences with work and how close I am too with my family. Conversation starter. Cape, Maine, red. It may be what you first notice, but it has lasting powers. Okay. So now I'm going to get into something a little bit shorter. You just have a few more. Um, many colleges have a supplemental essay question that asks you to write about your most meaningful extracurricular activity. And it's typically very limited, perhaps 200 words. So here's one, and what I love about it is that you don't know exactly what the student is going to write about or what he's talking about until you either recognize the lingo or he mentions a particular word. The moment I step on the field, I feel a tremendous hunger to compete. Maybe it's the touch of the ball. According to coach, the first touch is the most important. Maybe it's the surge of electricity and excitement I feel when the magic of a bicycle kick changes our advantage to score a great goal. Sprinting down the field, I feel alive. Soon enough, I'm in the heat of battle with sweat pouring from my body, my legs driving like pistons, mud dripping from my uniform, and my heart beating faster than a mouse's. Whether in triumph or defeat, I just like to be out there playing, competing, strategizing, trying new moves. Before every game, my dad always tells me, do it with a smile, but I don't need telling. Soccer is my game. It's what keeps me going. And certainly after sprinting, diving, dodging, tackling, hustling, and jumping for a full 90 minutes, smiling is easy work. I think it has a great hook in the beginning. You don't know what field he's, you know, crossing over into, and he's incredibly descriptive. You can actually feel what he's feeling and see what he's seeing. So here's another shorty, again, in response to exactly that same question to write a very short essay about your most meaningful extracurricular activity. And you'll notice that both of these um, share writing about their feelings, not specifically what they did. They're essays of reflection. Okay. He's up in the tree, his dark eyes smiling mischievously at me. I smile back, wave, and say in Spanish, Juan, I know you're up there, come down for dinner. The tiny tan boy launches from the limb with a screech of, Vamanos, Elizabeth. I feel elated as I wrap my arms around the six-year-old orphan and swing him onto my back while scooping up his younger brother. We're off to the kitchen where earlier I had prepared meals for the boys in the Mosquitos Orphanage. Here in Mexico, amongst the boys with no parents, I have learned that anyone can be a teacher, cook, storyteller, consoler of tears, or the inspiration for laughter and love. I have watched Juan, at the age of six, be all of that and more for the other boys at the orphanage. And I know that throughout my life, I will always strive to be that inspiration for my family, my community, and my world. One of the things you should notice is that she didn't talk about the fact that he is um, so, you know, he's, um, even though he has nothing, he's happy. Um, she didn't say she'll, you know, never take her, you know, things for granted. She had a completely different conclusion that striving to be the same inspiration for others as this young um, orphaned boy was for her. By the way, um, this was only the start of things for this, this young woman. She did this in Mexico as part of a volunteer project for Girl Scouts, which by the way, colleges love Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Um, she went on to do many other things um, in a Hispanic world and she is not Hispanic. And that diversity, her interest in diversity and in other cultures, I think really catapulted her to success in terms of her college admission. She did go to a very top tier university, um, has since graduated from medical school, um, married, practicing medicine. And we have one more. Um, it's also from a supplemental essay um, that asks why you want to go to a particular university. Um, and we could do a whole webinar on how to write the why essay, but I thought I would 
um, I signaled, singled this one out to read to you. And they, some of them, um, you can be as long as you want, almost four to 500 words. Others do limit you to maybe only 200 words. So this is why Penn, the University of Pennsylvania. It was not the quaint historic setting or the sculptural display of modern art that caught my attention one Friday afternoon in Philadelphia. While I was fascinating, but fascinated by the extraordinary architecture and urban flair of the University of Pennsylvania, it was the spirit of the student body that truly captivated me. Strolling down Locust Walk, I was hoping to absorb in a brief moment all the activity that defined the university. Immediately, I was surrounded by a horde of cheerful girls asking me to join their sorority. I took another few steps and stumbled upon a table sponsored by um, Campus Crusade for Christ. However, as I approached the class of 1920 Commons, I was particularly excited by the outward political activism on campus. The college Democrats stood on one side of the walkway and the college Republicans on the other, both handing out literature and encouraging others to become involved. I knew then that Penn is the place for me. Locust Walk is not only the social center of campus, but also the pathway I'll take to a myriad of classes and activities. Of primary interest to me is the philosophy, politics, and economics major. As a debater, philosophy enthusiast, and quintessential math nerd, I look forward to merging each of these disciplines into one with courses such as philosophy and the constitution and law and economics. My pursuits in international politics have spawned my interest in Middle Eastern affairs. While I regular read, regularly read about events occurring overseas, I hope to take a more in-depth approach to learning about the religions, governments, and ideologies of the area. I'm especially interested in studying the Arabic language, which will prepare me for a political career in international law or the foreign service. The PPE major and the ability to thoroughly explore the Middle East produce an irresistible combination unavailable at any other undergraduate school. Unlike Penn, sorry, like Penn's unique curriculum, the system of college housing also sets the university apart as an intriguing place for me. A residence hall at Penn is a community of students who share common interests, not simply a place to live. Considering my reputation as a political pundit, law and society in Fisher Hassenfeld College House is the perfect home for me to socialize with like-minded students. Alternatively, Having spent countless hours in my synagogue school and local library tutoring children in Hebrew, Spanish, and various core subjects, I would embrace the chance to continue guiding students as a member of the mentors program in Meeping College House. It is my ever-growing thirst for knowledge and involvement that would be aptly met by the diverse curriculum and hundreds of student organizations at Penn. Next year, I hope to find myself on Locust Walk not as a bystander, but as an active and thriving Quaker. Okay, moving on. Um, I know we're running out of time, so I'll go quickly, but I do want to cover these things. Common App, just a couple weeks ago, made the decision that they are going to include an optional, and I truly mean optional, this is one of the few times it means optional, um, essay that you can write about the impact of COVID-19 on your life. Um, you're asked if you want to share something or not, and yes or no, and if you do, an area will open up. It is a very short essay. It's not the same flair essay as your personal statement, but if you feel that you have a story that is unique, that is different from everyone else's, go ahead and write about it. Um, and I guess because there's so much to really say about this, I will tell you that we're publishing a blog. It's, it will come out this week. Um, if you go to our website, score at the top slash blog, you'll get um, lots and lots of details about writing or possibly writing or when not to write the short response to the COVID-19 essay. And by the way, um, your school counselor will also have an opportunity to write how your school responded to COVID-19 in terms of, you know, let's say online education and the way in which grades were issued. So colleges will fully understand its impact on every applicant. So I've already mentioned now that there are some supplemental essays over and above um, the Common App 
personal statement. When Common App goes live for next year, um, which is August 1st, although you can start it now because virtually everything will roll over, some colleges' um, supplemental questions will be available, um, but they don't all come out on August 1st. Some come out later in August, some don't come out until September. You may be able to um, to find them on colleges' websites. You can also call colleges to find out if they know yet what their supplemental essays will be. And I've given you a link um, to some of this year's essay prompts um, of some of the supplemental um, essays that are out there. Some will change, some will not. But some of the most popular ones, you've already seen the why. Why do you want to go to our college? You may also be asked why you have chosen a particular major. But you should also reflect upon how that major will impact you at that college. In other words, what's special about if I'm going to study um, aerospace engineering, what's special about the way, let's say, Purdue University teaches aerospace engineering, and I will want to reflect a little bit on my future career goals. You've seen a couple of essays now about elaborating on an extracurricular activity, but you can also see things like, what do you like to read? Or tell us about something that you find intellectually um, engaging. If you were to apply to school like Wake Forest or Stanford, um, you're likely to see six, eight, 10 essays. Some are very short, but they do have many supplemental essays. And some colleges that are test optional are also going to have an extra essay not all of them but some of them and in fact the university of miami which just announced that it will be test optional only for next year is going to add um an extra essay that um for you to reflect on your resilience um perhaps you know something about how resilient you are um they haven't finalized what that essay question will be but only the fact that they will be adding an extra supplemental essay for students who don't submit test scores so um, although this is coming to an end now, I do want to tell you that there are many ways that we can help you um, with writing great college essays. Certainly, it's something that we include when kids are working with us comprehensively on their entire college planning and application process. Although it's also possible just to work with us on an hourly basis with an application essay um, expert, someone like Kathy, who can guide you through multiple drafts of your essays. Um, we also have college admission boot camps coming up, one with Suncoast High School, one with um, Boca Raton Community High School, but they are open to students from um, all over. And if you just get in touch with us, we can tell you how to register. They are um, low cost workshops that will span about 15 hours um, over you know, about four different sessions. And a significant part of it will be um, writing your application essays. We are also doing um, college essay workshops. There'll be small group sessions. And by the way, all of this is planned right now for you know virtual until we know that we can go back you know in person. But we do have a college application essay workshop coming up almost immediately. That's just you know very small group working on, on their essays. And one thing that we've just recently added. Um, it is an essay special where um, you can get an in-depth review of just one essay with um, suggestions for improvement. Um, again, very, very low cost option. And the newest offering is we're going to do a free brainstorming session for the first 25 kids who register. Um, it's going to be on June 4th at 4 p.m. It'll be a webinar. But we would say come prepared with some of the ideas and we will do brainstorming sessions with you know, a group of no more than 25 students, um, all completely free. And you can sign up on our website. There's a special link. It's just um, www.personalstatement.guru. And um, we'd be happy to have you sign up for this um, brainstorming session that Kathy will be leading later this week. Um, for any additional information you'd like about our college counseling or essay um, assistance, you can call any of our learning center directors or email them. I've given you all of them. And I just do want you to know that we have a lot of other very interesting webinars that we have recorded. Um, if you'd like to learn more, 
about colleges like University of Florida, University of Miami, FSU, Vanderbilt, Indiana. Um, we have done webinars over the past several weeks with all of them. In fact, we have several more coming up. Um, this month, we're doing um, George Washington University and American University. Um, we've done a number of the private universities here in Florida. So um, you're more than welcome to tune into any of those and learn more about um, the impact of COVID-19 on their admissions process, um, on their plans for fall, and um, also about the university in general. And then other things related to the whole college application process, um, very in-depth essay um, webinar about test optional, all about the state universities in Florida. Uh, I think, you know, just lots of free webinars that can help you with your college planning. Um, and I know we're over time, but if there are a couple of, of you know, burning questions, I'm happy to answer them. Jason, do you have questions that anyone has typed in? Yeah, we've got a couple of questions, uh, not too many unless they come in now. Um, but as a rising senior, should I create my account for the Common App or should I wait for some time? Okay. That is the best question that anybody could have asked. Thank you so much. I really meant to get into this. So Common App has a feature that's called Rollover that they started several years ago. So all of you rising seniors, you can tonight start your Common App. Just go to commonapp.org, create an account, and you can fill out um, virtually everything on the basic um, six or seven pages of Common App. You could even create your college list. Um, what's going to happen is that Common App will go down for maintenance for a few days at the very end of July. And when it comes up again on August 1st, and sometimes it does come up late at night on July 31st, the first question you will be asked is, do you want to roll over your account? Just say yes. If you say no, you'll lose everything that you entered. Um, but once you say yes to roll it over, it will roll over virtually everything you have already entered. Basically, the only things it will not roll over is if you had answered college specific questions, which I'm saying don't do, just say with the basic common app pages, not the supplements um, and not what are called the member pages. Um, it will copy over every answer you have put in unless they change the way the question itself was asked so if they change the way the question was asked and that rarely happens you may see those few fields come up as blanks but you can absolutely save time by starting your common app now um, and of course starting your essay at least your essay brainstorming now how can we differentiate between verbose and adding detail to a sentence? Um, I, that, that's also a great question. Um, I think what you, what you want to do is read it out loud and maybe read it out loud to um, a couple of a friends, a parent, um, a teacher, a counselor. And first of all, ask them when you're done what picture they got. Um, ask them if they felt that there was like too much detail in there would something be lost if you took out a sentence would something be lost if you took out a few adjectives you don't want to use you know multiple adjectives you don't want to say something was just you know was 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 beautiful and lovely um you basically want to make sure that you won't you know that you use one adjective for each different feature perhaps and you know if it sounds you know, after you read your essay out loud, even to yourself, if it sounds like you're sort of droning on and on and on and on, you might say, okay, what descriptions can I throw out and still have the same picture? And by the way, here's, here's one other little trick that I like. Um, after you've written, let's say maybe you're into your second or third draft, you have your whole story written out. I often throw away the entire first paragraph and tell students, um, you will create more of a hook by jumping into the middle of the story. You might sometimes go back and reflect on what was in the, should have, you know, was originally in the beginning that you're going to put elsewhere, but often starting in the middle is a great way to start um, a story and create intrigue with a good hook. So my son got a 1450 on the SAT. Will the test optional change hurt his chances to get in? 
Okay, so number one, please listen to the test optional um, webinar and we also so on our website and we also will have a blog coming out probably this week or next week on test optional. Test optional does not mean test blind. So if you have an SAT or ACT score that is above the college's published average score, you absolutely should submit your scores. It will be more of an advantage than anything else. And by the way, some test optional colleges will still require your scores under certain circumstances. Certain majors um, will, will require them. Um, certain scholarships will require your test scores. But um, the opposite is if you don't submit a test score to a college that went test optional, then everything else is going to matter more and they will be looking for an even stronger academic record, um, a really stellar um, personal statement, uh, a, a resume with that, that really showcases um, your initiative, your leadership, um, your maybe your creativity, the impact of, of your activities. You know, everything else will matter more. But please, 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 with the score in the 1400s, you're pretty much submitting that everywhere. Is it true that writing essays about an event or interest that can relate in some way to your intended major is helpful? I, I would say yes, that, that if there is an essay, um, for instance, this may sound like a trite example, but I've seen it work really well. Um, Oh, actually, no, I thought of another one. So um, I have a student who is at a very top tier school, just finished her freshman year and um, she's majoring in biology. And her personal statement was actually about how her teachers tried to convince her at a young age that science was for boys, not for girls. And that, you know, because she wasn't doing well in science as, as a, you know, elementary or middle school student. And we're trying to turn her away from science. and until a particular middle school teacher mentioned a female scientist to her. Um, and she went home and looked up the scientist and was completely inspired. And it really changed her entire life. Um, and as I said, today she um, is a biology major at a very top tier university. So yes, definitely, you know, yes, writing about something that is related to your major um, for one of your essays can certainly help. But for colleges that have multiple essays, you really want to try to not write, you don't want to write the same about the same subject in more than one essay. So the, I read you that essay about soccer, um, and that was an extra essay. I, that was you know, not extra, but that was, um, you know, a supplemental essay. His main essay should not have been about soccer. And in fact, probably should not have been about sports. It should have been about some other facet of his life. Is there any rule about the number of paragraphs in the personal statement? Um, the only rule about the number of paragraphs in the personal statement is common sense. So um, chances are it's not going to be one paragraph, a long stream of consciousness essay. I've seen it, but it doesn't always work well. But um, please don't think it has to be five paragraphs. A great personal statement could be 12 paragraphs. It could be three paragraphs. It doesn't matter. It's wherever it breaks naturally. That was our last question. Awesome. So again, I really just want to thank everyone um, for being here this evening. We are recording and you'll get an email follow up. And um, if you want, you know, if you missed any part of it, you'll be able to play it again. <laughs> and I certainly hope you'll think about, you know, following us on you know, Facebook or, you know, or Twitter. Um, we're always posting about college admissions and our blog has been even more active than usual um, since we were sheltered at home. So thanks, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, be safe. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.